Let's see who got it right at the fastest time. Patrick Trujillo. $16,000 question, and here it is. What are the leaves of ferns most commonly called? I think I'm going to go to the, uh, the audience on this, Regis. 54% feel it's fronds. I'm going to go with B. Going to go with the audience. You had $8,000. Now you got 60. Now, join us from New York for night 76 of Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? Thank you very much, everybody. Welcome to Thursday Night Out Who Wants to Be a Millionaire. You know, we're very proud of the fact that this show is so popular with kids all over the country, and we've been getting letters from entire class, classes like these from every state in the union. Now, this one is from the fourth grade class at Crescentwood Elementary School in East Point, Michigan. One young girl named Danielle wrote and said, I love your show. I watch you every night. Happy that you're on TV. I have a question to ask you. You may think that this is so stupid, but why do boys act so immature? <laughs> well, Danielle, uh, why don't we check this out right on a little computer right here. Why do boys act so <laughs> immature? A, they're too young. B, too silly. C, too stubborn. D, they never grow up. <laughs> and the final answer is all of the above. <laughs> Anyway, good luck and thanks, kids, for watching our show. Now, Patrick Duhon, a returning contestant from Seattle, Washington, could really appreciate using the show as a teaching tool, which many teachers do, since his job involves recruiting youths to mentor in inner city schools. Nice to have you back on the show, Patrick. Thank you. Jesus. You and your brother standing by, sitting by over there. Nice to see you yes, again. How you, doing? you two guys got back out on the town last night, huh? Um, yeah, we were um, went out and um, checking some of our old haunts, looking for a little bit of inspiration with uh, Father McSorley and. Father McManus and uh -huh. their, their little inns that they have. And, <laughs> These are uh, well-known New York bars. <laughs> but before that, you did uh, visit some of the places that you worked at. Yeah, we, uh, we had a chance to stop by the, uh, uh, the church that we used to, uh, Mark, Mark and I, about 12 years ago, were here for a summer uh, working at a soup kitchen and a shelter. And so we went back and just all the changes in the neighborhood into the building. Well, what does it look like, like now? Um, the Lower East Side is, is massively changed. Uh, yeah, so. I, I think they've done a good job here in New York. Mm -hmm. And people like you have helped considerably. It seems to me like you spent most of your life, and your brother as well, in public service. It's been something we've done with our lives, yeah. It's, been, it's, uh, it's, a, it's a good living, and it's just something that um, kind of ingrained in us through our You're education. Doing and the same thing business. in Seattle right now, huh? Yeah, just trying to get other young people to, to try to make that commitment with their lives. So. Well, that's good, Patrick. You're a good guy. And you've won $16,000 here, and you're just six questions away from winning $1 million. Now, here's how we play. The more questions you get right, the more money you win. But once you reach the $32,000 level, you're guaranteed to leave here with at least that much money. You still have two of your lifelines to help, 50-50, and you can phone a friend. So that's the story, Patrick. Are you ready to play? I am. Going to go for a million? We'll try. Why don't we do it? Why don't we get started? Audience, ready? Let's do it. Let's play who wants to be a millionaire. Here's a very important uh, question, $32,000, get this, and you can't leave here with less than that. Here's the question. In August 2000, the Mattel doll, known as Barbie, will be offered with which of the following features? Nose piercing, belly button, freckles, movable fingers. In August 2000, the Mattel doll, known as Barbie, be offered with which of the following features? I bet you haven't seen a Barbie in a while, have you? Oh, I have. Uh, my uh, my daughter, Mary. That's right. She wanted to make sure I said hello to you tonight, by the way. Well, that's good. To hello her. to her. Before yeah. I bought her a Barbie doll uh, and brought her home, she said. so. Um, well, there's going to be a new feature in August. Yeah. What do you think it is? I think I'm uh, going to have to use a lifeline here. And I'm going to phone, um, phone a friend. I'm going to phone my sister-in-law, actually. Sister-in-law, that might be a, a good choice. All right, fine. Uh, what's her name? Uh, Suzanne McDonough. Suzanne. All right, our friends at AT&T will find Suzanne and get her on the line. Hello? Suzanne? Yes? Hi, Regis Philbin here from ABC's so Who Wants to Be a Millionaire. Hello, Regis. I've got your uh, brother-in-law, Patrick, on the line. 
great. He needs your help. He's going for thirty-two thousand dollars. It's an important question. Okay. So in a minute he's going to come on and read the question and four possible answers. One okay. of them is the right answer. Okay. Right here. All right, Patrick. It's all yours. You got thirty seconds, and they start now. In August two thousand, the Barbie doll will be offered with which of the following features: nose piercing, belly button, freckles, or movable fingers? Okay. Uh, okay, Barbie doll, nose piercing. Belly button, freckles, or movable fingers? Belly button, movable fingers. In 2000, in, in August. Okay. No, uh, piercing, you said piercing ears? No, nose piercing, belly button, freckles, fingers. Five seconds. Freckles. Uh, oh, God, God. Okay. Too bad. So, what do you think, Patrick? Just thinking, just like another minute here to think about this. Sure, so. take your time. I'll just read some of the letters from the kids. That'd be great. What other problems can I solve? <laughs> Do you like your job? Sometimes. <laughs> the 50-50. Good idea. <laughs> I want to see you win. You devoted your whole life to public service, and I want to see you win some, some money here. So, computer, take away two of the wrong answers, leaving one wrong answer and the correct one for Patrick. In August of 2000, the year is 2000, the Mattel doll, known yeah. as Barbie, will be offered with which of the following features? If it were a belly button piercing, I would feel really comfortable with that, you know, but... Uh... Well, it's either <laughs> nose piercing or a little belly button on Barbie. Well, Regis, I've, um, I've had a great time in New York, and I tell you what, but I'm going to make an answer because, like, you know, I got, you know, I've had a great time. Even if I get a thousand bucks, it's been, it's been incredible here in the city, you know? I love this. Favorite that, place... New York is glad to have you back. Favorite, favorite place on the planet. All right. Um... I'm going to go with A, nose piercing. I'm going to say to you, final answer. Final answer. Ah! It's belly button. It's belly button. Can you believe it? It's belly button. I'll be darned. Well, all right. I'm glad for Barbie. She got a belly button. I had a great time. I am Thank so you. upset, man. Thank you. Thank I you am very much. furious. Thank you very Good luck to you. Yeah, I seldom get that involved with the uh, contestants, but that was a killer. So, yes, the new Barbie doll will be out in August, and yes, she will have a belly button and a bendable waist. Whoopee. <laughs> but the best of luck to Patrick and his brother. It was great having them here. Right now, we've got ten new contestants raring to go. And who are they tonight? Let's find out. They are Aaron, Kelly, James, Palatine, Illinois, Dennis Noon, Jacksonville, Florida, Robbie Auger, Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. Mark Barber, Syracuse, New York. Tom Owell, Topeka, Kansas. Joel Nick, San Antonio, Texas. Pierre Orday, Egan, Minnesota. Dan Monty, Nickerson, Kansas. Bob Scarpone, Flanders, New Jersey. And Ian Reifowitz, New York City. All right, contestants, here's how it works now. In a moment, a question of four answers will appear on your screens. The one who puts these answers in the correct order in the fastest time will be our next player. Audience, we need complete silence for this one. Here is that question. Put these movies in order of their first theatrical release debut, starting with the most recent. Sleepy Hollow, The Electric Horseman, National Velvet, City Slickers. 
Okay, time's up. Let's see the answer in the correct order, starting with the most recent movie, Sleepy Hollow. And then City Slickers, Electric Horseman, finally National Velvet. That's the right order. Let's see who got it right in the fastest time. The winner, Pierre yes. Orday. Yes. Pierre Orday, congratulations. Good for, Good for you. We'll be right back. Pierre is going for a million. Way to go. So we're back now, and don't forget, right now you can log on to abc.com and play along with Enhanced TV. I think you'll, you'll enjoy that. Well, our next um, guy in the hot seat is Pierre Audet, comes to us from Egan, Minnesota. That's probably near Minneapolis. Yeah. And you're a high school teacher. Yeah, I uh, have to say hi to my Spanish and French classes or they'd never forgive me. <laughs> Hello. You, you Hola. You teach both the, both the languages, huh? Yeah. Good. Good for you. Are you from France? Uh, I was born in Switzerland, actually, but right on the border of France and Switzerland, mm -hmm. uh, right next to Geneva. Well, that's good. So how do you feel? Uh, I'm feeling good. I'm, I'm ready to go. You came out of that, uh, that chair over there like a rocket. I was worried I was going to knock out my uh, partners there. <laughs> yeah. But you're here, you're all set, and you're accompanied by uh, your fiancé, Casey. Hi, Casey. How you how doing? You good. So you and Casey, have you set a date, Casey? Uh, yeah, we're pushing for June 17th. June 17th of this year. Yeah. All right, fine, Pierre. Let's, uh, let's try to win a little money here and get ready for that uh, wedding, okay? You know the rules. You know about the lifelines. 50-50. You can ask the audience. You can phone a friend. All here for you. So if you're ready, Pierre, let's play. Who wants to be a millionaire? $100, Pierre, and here it comes. According to a popular phrase, what is thrown at someone who is charged with a crime? Is it a cat, a chair, a book, a sponge? See, a book. Yeah, they throw a book at you if you're charged with a crime. $200. What is the relationship between TV host Donnie and Marie Osmond? Are they brother and sister, uncle and niece, cousins, just good friends? Uh, I think a brother and sister. Yes, they are brother and sister. $300. Which of the following businesses is officially known as the home of the Whopper? Wendy's, Burger King, McDonald's, Rochester, Big and Tall. It's one of my favorite uh, two in the morning places to go be Burger King. Burger King, home of the Whopper, you're right. For $500. In what sport did the phrase hitting the wall originate to describe its exhausted athletes? Skiing, swimming, golf, marathon running. This is kind of what I was worried about. There's a one that's going to throw me here. You know, I want to stay in the game, so I'm going to have to use a lifeline and call the audience. All right, we understand. Sure, audience, Pierre needs some help here. On your keypads, using A, B, C, or D, Please vote now. Sixty-three percent feel it's marathon running. That's kind of what I thought it was, but I just I wanted swimming to be swimming through you a little bit. Yeah, yeah, I wanted to. Well, be sure. it could be swimming too. Twenty-five percent feel it's swimming. I I'm going to go with the audience. I have confidence. Uh, D. Final answer. Final answer. They said marathon running. They're right for five hundred dollars. <laughs> Okay, let's take a look at the question now for $1,000. In a popular trivia game, every actor is linked by six degrees to which of the following men? Dennis Hopper, Kevin Bacon, Tom Hanks, Bruce Willis. I've played this myself. It's uh, B, Kevin Bacon. Yes, everybody's linked to Kevin Bacon. $2,000, take a look. If you're eating creme brulee, what kind of dessert are you eating? Cheesecake, custard, cream puff, tort. You ever had creme brulee? 
I have, and I'm just right now drawing a blank for a minute. My French class is never gonna let me live this down if I don't Absolutely, get Absolutely, and it's a very famous French dessert. Pierre Orgay. <laughs> About this, do you know the translation of creme brulee? Yeah. What, what, what is it? Uh, in French, it's it's burnt uh, cream, burnt cream. Mm. So that's why I'm kind of. <laughs> I'm thinking that it's. Uh, I'm thinking it's B a custard, but tort. I am going to try and just guess on this one and really save my lifelines here. All right, Pierre, just go with your heart. Yeah. I am think I'm going to guess B, the custard. Final answer, Pierre? That is my final answer. What's the problem? It's a custard! <laughs> He's won $2,000. Two lifelines left. We'll be right back in a moment. Pierre Orday from uh, Egan, Minnesota. That's right near Minneapolis. And of course, he teaches at the zoo school or the School for Environmental Studies. Right. And you are an accomplished guy. I mean, you've got a lot of interests. You do a lot of things. You're a trick water skier. Where did you learn that? Uh, just from my friends up north in Duluth. I started when I was very young. It was just something to do when it, whenever it was nice, which was maybe five days out of the year. Yeah, in Minnesota, <laughs> but you got those 10,000 lakes. Yeah, so. plenty of lakes to practice. And you also play the violin. Yeah, yeah, I've been playing the violin since I was three years old. And you played a lot in the uh, streets of uh, Geneva, was it? Yeah, when I was uh, seven, eight years old, I, uh, my mom thought I should, I, I always liked to just practice, and she said, well, why don't you just practice out in the streets and kind of put your case out to, you know, like all the street musicians <laughs> do out there, so... I, I opened my case, got in there, and uh, they had never seen, you know, in the U.S., it, it's more common to start at such a young age, but over in Switzerland, they, they don't usually start classical violin. That's changed now, but they hadn't back at the time until they're, they're about 13, 14. Mm -hmm. I opened up my case and started playing, and uh, pretty soon I was making between $100 and $200 an hour. No just, kidding, $200 yeah. an hour. All what? with just coins, coins Well, what do you in. need this aggravation for? <laughs> All right, Pierre, here you go. You won 2,000. We're going for 4,000. Nine away from a million. Two lifelines left. Let's do it. Let's play. $4,000. Here it comes. What type of bed was designed to be folded into a wall or closet when not in use? Water bed? Bunk bed? Trundle bed? Murphy bed? I know uh, people at home are probably throwing stuff at the TV right now. <laughs> you think you've narrowed it down to a couple? Well, I'm between C and D. Trundle bed and Murphy bed. Yeah. What are you leaning towards? Kind of leaning towards D, the Murphy bed. I've heard my mother use, you know, Murphy bed, put away the Murphy bed, but she's from Switzerland and maybe they call it to something else over there. <clears throat> Trundle, I haven't heard. Stay in the game still, just, I know one of these questions I'll know straight out, so I'm going to use a lifeline for this, and uh, I'm going to phone a friend. Want to phone somebody? Who are you calling? I am going to call, 
I'm going to call Roger. All right, fine. We'll get Roger on the line. AT&T will get him there. We'll see if he can help. Hello? Hello, Roger. Yes. Hi, Regis Philbin calling from New York. How are you? Good, Mr. Philbin. How are you? Well, we've got Pierre here, and he's having fits with a question. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. And he's uh, decided you're the one who could help. So in a moment, he's going to read the question and uh, give you two possible, four possible answers, as a matter okay. of fact. And hope uh, you come up with the right one, okay? All right. Pierre, it's all yours. 30 seconds starting now. Roger, uh, what type of bed was designed to be folded into a wall or closet when not in use? Is it water bed, bunk bed, trundle bed, or Murphy bed? Murphy bed. You're sure about that? Positive. Oh, I was totally spacing out. I'm glad you could help. Having fun over there? Yeah. <laughs> Just had to visit with you a little bit. Well, I, I know, won't, I'll be back in school uh, Thursday. Good. Hillary had her baby, by the way. What? Hillary had her baby. Oh, excellent. Great. Yeah. So, <laughs> hey, thanks, Roger. We appreciate the news. <laughs> Who had the baby? Uh, Hillary. She's another teacher at our school. All right. So Roger says Murphy bed. What do you I, think? I'm sure he's right. I will say D, Murphy bed. Which is what you thought uh, originally, right? Know, All right. Yeah. Murphy bed, final answer. Final answer. Murphy bed, the right answer for $4,000. All right, so here we go. You're eight away from a million now. You won four thousand. We're going for eight thousand. Here it is. In a song from the musical West Side Story, what is the most beautiful sound Tony ever heard? Maria, Anita, I do, wife. Seen West Side Story. <laughs> uh... Remember this song? I do remember this song. I'm pretty sure it's A or C here, and I'm... I've... You're not going to do this to us again, are you? <laughs> I think if I get up to the million dollar question, I'll just pick one. <laughs> uh... Again, I kind of want to hope to stay in the game. I, if, if I use my 50-50, though, I, would, I have a feeling it would probably still be A and C. <clears throat> I don't know. Yeah, I hate to do this, but I'm, I'm going to use the 50-50. 50-50. Computer, take away two of the wrong answers, leaving Pierre one wrong answer and the correct one. Uh, I love it. Pierre, Pierre, Pierre. <laughs> I didn't need that 50-50 anyway. I, I've got it down to 50-50 all of these <laughs> so far. <laughs> I'm just going to have to say C, I do. <laughs> Every time I want to say that, Maria comes back up. I'm going to say C, I do. Final answer. Well, we're sorry. Pierre, you leave here with a thousand. Nice try and good luck to you. Okay? Right out this way. I tell you, it's uh, not easy for me when I see the contestant going down the wrong path, but we all love that song. I even knew the answer. Maria. <laughs> High note that Johnny Mathis wishes he could hit, but there's nothing I could do. God, just like that. Anyway, we've got nine more contestants ready to go, so here's the next fastest finger question. Put these rock albums in the order they were first released, starting with the earliest. Born to Run, Synchronicity, The Wall, Abbey Road. Time's up. Let's see the answer in the correct order. Starting with the earliest, Abbey Road, Born to Run, The Wall, Synchronicity. All right, that's the right order. Who, who got it right in the fastest time? Ian 
Right over. from New York City. We'll be right back. I am Reifowitz in the hot seat right now. He is a uh, college history uh, professor at uh, LIU, that's Long Island University in Brooklyn. Just finished his PhD in January. Welcome yes. to the show. Thank you. And has been greatly influenced by his grandmother, Doris, who's sitting right there in the relationship seat, who asked you, uh, Ian, to uh, make the call. She did. Yeah. She did. She pushed me and pushed me, and, uh, and finally I did. All right, very good. Ready to go here? Yes. Let's do it, okay? okay. You know the rules. You know the lifelines, 50-50. Ask the audience, phone a friend. If you're ready, uh, Ian, let's do it. Let's play Who Wants to Be a Millionaire. Here we go. $100. What is the name for the after work time period when bars offer alcoholic drinks at discount prices? Mad Minute? Happy Hour? Spicy Second? Exuberant Evening? B. Happy Hour. Happy Hour, final answer? Yes. Happy hour is the answer. Yes, for $100. For $200. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you is also known as what? The Golden Rule, Draconian Law, Hippocratic Oath, Apollo Creed. <laughs> That's clever. The answer is A, Golden Rule. Golden Rule is right for $200. $300. Here it is. According to the popular expression, you have perfect vision if your eyesight is what? 1020, 2020, 2030, 3030. B, 2020. 2020 is perfect vision. 2020, the perfect answer. You're right for $300. $500. Here it is. Which of the following items is traditionally kept in a quiver? Flowers, books, arrows, needles. Arrows, C. Arrows is it, in the quiver. One 500, going for a thousand. Which New York City location is the current home of the dance troupe known as the Rockettes? Radio City Music Hall, Grand Central Station, Madison Square Garden, Carnegie Hall. It says current home. I don't know that it's ever changed, so it's A, Radio City Music Hall. Sure, it's the Radio City Music Hall for $1,000. Okay, first five questions gone. All the lifelines are intact. Here it is for $2,000. In 1989, General Colin Powell became the youngest person to be named chairman of what military group? CIA, Green Berets, Navy SEALs, Joint Chiefs of Staff. D, Joint Chiefs of Staff. Final answer? Yes. Colin Powell was the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff. $4,000. Who was the original host of the home repair television show series, This Old House? Was it Tim Allen, Dean Johnson, Bob Villa, Steve Thomas? Well, I can thank my father because he would consistently put this show on. And I really didn't understand why, but now I do. And I just hope it's not older than I think it is. So, but I remember seeing Bob Villa see. Bob, your final answer? Yes. Bob Vila, the right answer for $4,000. Okay, he's won $4,000. He's going for $8,000. All three lifelines, eight away from a million. Come on back. <laughs> Ian Reifowitz in the hot seat right now. He teaches uh, college history at uh, LIU in uh, Brooklyn, and, uh, but your dad wanted you to become a doctor, right? My whole family. So what happened? Well, they discovered that I was a bit squeamish when I saw blood, and that kind of put the kibosh on it. Uh-huh. 
So you married a doctor instead? Uh, I guess so. <laughs> Well, not just because he wanted sure, to. Sure, yeah. sure. There were other reasons, too. She's she a nice person. She couldn't be here, Jane, but she's an OB-GYN? Uh, yes, yes. Terrific. Yes. Anyway, your grandma's here, and she's, as I said earlier, been working with you since you were two years old. What have you done exactly for him, Grandma? Well, he learned how to read a newspaper at the age of two when he read fluently. <laughs> with your help? With, he was smart. Okay. <laughs> then I taught him how to play poker at three. <laughs> And then we used to play baseball when he was about six. I used to pitch to him and all his friends. Oh, my gosh. And I always had great pleasure. Isn't great that nice? Pleasure. And you kept your eye on him all these years, urged him to make the call. He made always. the call. Here he is, and there you are. And I don't stop my mornings without you, Regis. Oh, really? Oh, okay. <laughs> well, that's nice here. Thank you. Think you're the only one, Ian? <laughs> All right, here we go now. You're in pretty good shape, my man. You've uh, won 4000 You're going for 8000 All your lifelines are with you. Let's do it. Let's play. For $8,000, sales of the record We Are the World raised money to benefit which of the following? American farmers, Bosnian refugees, Ethiopian famine, Asian orphans. Well, it was USA for Africa, so it would have to be C, Ethiopian famine. Yes. Want to make that your final answer? Yes. Yes, it was Ethiopian famine, the right answer for $8,000. All right, we're seven away now from a million. We're going for $16,000. Here it is. What North American bird has the largest wingspan? The California condor, the peregrine falcon, bald eagle, red-tailed hawk. This one could take a while. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for the warning. Yes, yes. All right, well, my gut instinct is that I have no idea. <sighs> Think about it. I'm going to ask the audience. Audience, Ian needs your help. On your keypads, using A, B, C, or D, please vote now. Well, 56% feel it's the California condor. Eagle came in second. Yeah. Well, those were the two I had it narrowed down to. Oh, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy. The audience is pretty good. It's a good margin. It's almost double. I'm gonna go, oh, God. Need some water, Ian? Yes. <laughs> you know, I don't, I don't have any uh, lifelines devoted to eagles or condors. Yeah, so you went to the audience, and this is uh, what they say. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 I'm gonna go with the audience, please. <laughs> oh boy, and say A for audience. <laughs> <laughs> California condor. Wanna give me an F for final answer? Yes, final answer. Ian, Ian, they were right. <laughs> Wingspan of 108 inches on the average. All right, so here's where we stand. You lost a lifeline, you got two left, 16,000, six away from a million. Here's a very important question, $32,000. Which star of movie and TV westerns owned a major league baseball team? Tex Ritter, Roy Rogers, Glenn Ford, Gene Autry. D, Gene Autry. I better know baseball. Final answer. Got it right for $32,000. All right, Ian. Five away from $1 million. When we come back. Ian Reifowitz, $32,000. There it is.
Ah, boy, actually in the terrific shape here. He's got two lifelines left, and he's just five questions away from $1 million. Are you, are you okay? Are you nervous? I'm feeling better than Good. I was at 100 and 200. Yeah, sure. <laughs> Those questions can be tricky, but here you are. You've won 32,000. Yeah. Can't leave here with less than that. Going for 64,000. Two lifelines. Let's play. Here we go for a million dollars. For $64,000, which of these artists painted the work known as The Scream? Edgar Degas. Edvard Munch. Edouard Manet. Claude Monet. Well, I'm tempted to make the face of the screen, but I won't, because it would look silly. And the answer is B, Edvard Munch. 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 Final answer is Munch. Monk it is, final Monk answer. Monk it is. Monk, Monk, Monk is right for 64,000. <laughs> You're four away from a million. You're going for $125,000. <laughs> Does your wife know where you are? She is. She's waiting at home, in, in theory, for a phone call for the lifeline. Aha. Uh -huh. Oh, really? Oh, oh yeah. She's smart. Oh, oh yes. I, I thought maybe she was in the hospital. No. All right, no, so no. we got her to yeah, help us oh, out here. Yeah. Four away from a million, $125,000. Here it is. What world capital was once known as Edo? Kathmandu? Tokyo? Seoul? New Delhi? This is hard. All right. Well, obviously I'm going for it. It's a given. Uh, I'm going to use the phone friend. Gonna call the wife? No. <laughs> no, she, she's a science. Yes. I'm gonna call Aviel. Avio is who? He was my dissertation advisor. He's very smart. All right, good. Avio. AT&T, get us Avio, quick. Hello? Avio. Yes? Hi, Regis Philbin here from Who Wants to Be a Millionaire. Hi. I've got your uh, dissertation uh, uh, pupil here. So I understand. And we still need some more advice. Okay. All right, you know you can't see us right now, but he's won 64000 and going for 125000 Not bad. He's going to come on the line and read a question and four possible answers. Okay. One of them's the right answer, okay? Very good. All right, so here's Ian. You've got 30 seconds starting now. What world capital was once known as Edo, Kathmandu, Tokyo, Seoul, New Delhi? Tokyo. How sure are you? 75%. How do you know? Because <laughs> I'm your advisor. Ah. Well, you're, you're pretty sure, huh? Uh, do you want to repeat the question if you have the time? What world capital was once known as Edo, Kathmandu, Tokyo, Seoul, New Delhi? I don't think he was going to change his mind. No. I don't he said it with a lot of confidence. Yeah. Uh, uh, how do I not trust my dissertation advisor? I have nothing to lose. So well, I've got 32,000. That's right. Well, oh, yeah. I mean, <laughs> I mean, I, okay. All right, so he advised you well there. Maybe I'm, he'll do it again. I'm sure he will. I'm going to go with B, Tokyo. B, Tokyo. I'm going to say final answer. Yes, You're going to say yes, and I'm going to say he's right for $125,000. Oh! All right, we're going to leave it here at 125000 You'll come back uh, next time and we'll play again, and you'll be going for 250000 with one lifeline left. And that sound, of course, means we're out of time for tonight, but he'll be back here on Sunday night, and joining him will be 10 new contestants who have flown in from all over the country. And they are Michael Kessel, <laughs> Stephanie Agnew, Doug Goodman, Shauna Rosen, Dan Howard, Julie Gordon, Jeff Luxford, Lori Waters, Jim White and Dan O'Neill. This is your last chance to qualify to become the contestant for our April tape days. So pick up a touchstone phone between the hours of 6 p.m. and 2 a.m. Eastern Time and call 1-800-433-8321.
There's a limit of one call per person each contest day. Hurry up and call because phone lines close tomorrow, March 31st at 2 a.m. Eastern Time. And we'll see you back here Sunday night. At what time, Ian? 9, 8 Central. There you go. Stay tuned now for the series premiere of Wonderland, next on ABC. From New York, everybody. Good night. <laughs>